your credit score will impact how much you pay on your car insurance rates. On today's episode, what I wanna do is dive deeper into the relationship between scores and car insurance rate setting. I wanna see exactly how it affects you directly. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this episode, so stick around. Hey, welcome back to the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel where we help you go further faster financially while remaining safe in the process. The practice of using credit scores in setting insurance rates has been around for at least 20 years. According to two different studies, a 2003 study that was done at the University of Texas at Austin and a 2007 study that was done by the Federal Trade Commission prove apparently that there is a statistical connection between a consumer's credit scores and how much that consumer costs their insurance companies. The Texas study researched a sample of, get this, 175,647 people. And what they found was this, I quote, the lower of named insured's credit scores, the higher the probability that the insured will incur losses on an automobile insurance policy and the higher the expected loss on the policy. The study's authors actually noted that they did not attempt to explain why credit scoring added significantly to the insurer's ability to predict insurance losses. The FTC went on to say after their study that credit-based insurance scores are effective in predicting risk to automobile insurers. They agree. They are predictive of the number of claims consumers file and the total cost of those claims. They go on to write the, the use of scores is therefore likely to, to make the price of insurance better match the risk of loss that's posed by the consumer. Thus, on average, higher risk consumers will pay higher premiums and lower risk consumers will pay lower premiums. That's what the FTC sounds like. It's also important to note that the insurance companies don't use traditional credit scores, guys. They build their own scores based on FICO or Experian. Basically, they're taking your scores and they're using it within their own formula. The question is this, is any of this even fair? According to J. Robert Hunter, he's the director of insurance at the Consumer Federation of America, rate factors were initially determined by developing a thesis and then proving or disproving that thesis based on the data that's being collected. For example, let's say that the thesis was drivers with a drunk driving conviction. They have more claims in the following year than those without statistical evidence would be studied to see if such a thesis was correct. He goes on to explain that credit scoring was actually the first classification factor used by insurance companies that really was not based on traditional actuarial research. Hunter even acknowledges that advocates for the use of credit scores in car insurance rate setting still can't explain what they are measuring. Coming up with explanations like sloppy with finance means sloppy with driving. That's insane. He goes on to say this, the fact that credit is a surrogate for prohibited rate classes like income and race, insurers are prohibited from using these factors in all, all states, all 50 states. And he thinks that this is their way around the prohibition. But others argue that insurance is just a numbers game and then, then the practice, even if it's a little unfair, it might be logical. I'm really curious to know what you think. Are credit scores a valid way to predict driving risks and how has this maybe affected you? Regardless if we agree or disagree on this being fair, it is legal in all but those three states. So what can you do if your credit score is in less than perfect shape. Well, as with most things, I always recommend the best first step is to shop around. Shop around for the best insurance providers for you. According to a 2018 study by WalletHub, Geico surprisingly appears to rely the least on credit scores. And here, farmer's insurance seems to lean on it the most heavily. In fact, WalletHub set out to see just how much credit data affects the cost of insurance policies in each of the 50 states and the District of Columbia, and it's scary, guys. People with no credit at all pay 67% more for car insurance than people with excellent credit. On average, again, sorry, Dave Ramsey, to prove you wrong, but credit is critical to strong financial capabilities and potential. Now, since this study with WalletHub is a little outdated, I do recommend that you pick up the phone and just do research for yourself. Call insurance companies and ask the questions. Now, real quick, for consumers who have difficulty finding any coverage at all, there is an assigned risk plan in almost every single state that helps high-risk drivers find coverage for a limited period of time. 
The rates are obviously gonna be higher than your standard policies, but you will avoid possible insurance lapses and legal challenges, both of which are expensive. So be sure you cover your butt if you are driving on our roads. One last point of hope here before we wrap up today, if you hate this connection between credit history and car insurance, you're not alone. In fact, even members of Congress have recently proposed legislation that would remove credit scores from the auto insurance rate equation and base the cost of your premiums on your driving history only. Let me know what you think of that, guys, in the comments section. Would you like to see a bill prevent credit from being involved in your insurance rating? Personally, I see both sides of this, probably because I've had terrible credit and I took the time and the steps that were needed to build it back up. And when I had bad credit, it felt like you know, it was just another pair of hands ringing every last dollar out of me. But as the hard work paid off and I began to earn rewards and, and be recognized for building great credit, I certainly appreciate the perks. So with that being said, I would still love to see car insurance premiums based on the driving record only. I don't think it's fair that the two are connected. Let me know what you think. Either way, it is what it is at the moment, and until it changes, the key is to build or maintain your strong credit as strong as possible by subscribing to this channel. Make sure you smash that subscribe button to VIP Financial Ed, watch all of our videos on how to rapidly grow your credit strength, and be sure also to access free credit monitoring right away with a company like Credit Karma or Credit Sesame and proactively work towards these perks. Beyond great insurance premiums, I'm here to tell you folks, your credit can make you wealthy beyond your wildest imagination. It's worked for me. I hope to show you how. Make it a great day. It's so easy. All you have to do is play the game. Everybody play the game. had the privilege of teaching about personal and business credit on hundreds of stages around the country over the last 15 plus years, as well as video after video here on YouTube. And I show the exact basic steps, exactly how easily you can use credit to build lifelong wealth. 